بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله I hope to do a, a series of reflections on very short verses or statements from the Quran that will help us better understand some of the fundamental principles قواعد القرآن those foundational principles of the Quran one of the extraordinary aspects of the Quran is that because it's a non-linear book when you read it unlike for instance the Bible or previous dispensations that have come to people it's 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 constantly pulling you back into these core virtues so there's verses that will come in different ways again and again uh, one of the most important concepts in the Quran is the idea of taqwa and this is why it's foundational. In fact, the very first verse that gives a command in the Quran is that we are told in, the, in Surah Al-Baqarah, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس أعبدوا ربكم O humanity, worship your Lord الذي خلقكم والذين من قبركم لعلكم تتقون So worship your Lord, humanity, and know that He created you, the one who created you and those before you, so that you don't think you're in some kind of infinite regress or circular type of reasoning. There was a beginning to all this. There was a first parents, Adam and Hawa, Adam and Eve. And so it's a reminder that you had a beginning, your species had a beginning. Although you came from your parents, your parents had parents who had parents all the way back. There's no infinite regress and there's no circular reasoning. There's, you have to arrive at a first cause. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that once you determine, once you understand that you have a Lord, you have to worship that Lord. And the purpose of that worship is to achieve what the Quran calls لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That perhaps you might gain this piety Taqwa is a difficult word to pin down in, because it has a semantic field that gives a lot of nuanced meanings. But primarily it has to do with prevention. Wiqaya is prevention. And so when you when you when you taqi, when when you, you ward off something, you're warding off harm. The word in Arabic for believer, mu'min, means the one who secures. Al Mu'min is one of the names of God because God secures us. Amana means to secure something. From amina yatmanu means to be secure. So amana means to secure something. How do you secure something as a believer? Billah. Amantu billah. I have secured myself through God. In other words, with God I find security. And this is at the essence of what taqwa is. It's a way of protecting yourself from harm through your devotion to your Lord. And so no matter what comes to you, you will be in a good situation. So for instance, when we read the Quran in, in, in a, a very interesting hadith about the latter days in which Sayyidina Ali heard the Prophet say that the, the calamities, civil strife, sedition, fitna would continue and become so constant that eventually it would become like portions of a dark black night. And that's certainly the case in some places right now in the world. There are Muslims that their lives are like portions of a dark black night. And the Prophet ﷺ, when he said that, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet ﷺ, what's the way out of that? How do we get out of that situation? And this is one of the interesting things about the companions. They always ask the right question. If you, if you see hadiths where they ask questions, they always ask the right question. He didn't say, oh, how terrible that day is going to be. No, he wanted to know what's the right out. Mal khalasu. How do we get out of that situation? And the reason that he asked that question, in my estimation, is because he knew a Quranic principle. Whoever has taqwa of God, God will always give him an exit strategy. God will always give him an exit, a way out of a situation, always. This is a promise. 
يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ This is known in Arabic as a jumla sharqiya or a conditional sentence. If you fulfill this condition, then this is the result. And so if you have taqwa, you will have a way out. And so when the Prophet ﷺ said it was the book of Allah, kitab Allah, he told them, فِيهِ نَبَأُ مَا قَبْرُكُمْ وَخَبْرُ مَا بَعْدُكُمْ It tells you what happened in the past and it gives you insights into what's going to happen in the future. What that means is there are many stories in the Qur'an that are sacred history. While we can't prove them in some historical account uh, that archaeologists and others go through, we believe them to be true because they've been revealed, but the historical nature of them is not what's important. It's the lessons that are important, and that's why it's sacred history in that way. So we could never prove the Garden of Eden or what happened in the Garden of Eden, but we know that it is sacred history in order for us to understand the lessons of the beginning of our species. The most constant uh, story that we find in the Qur'an, coming in different ways with different nuances, is the story of Pharaoh and Moses, of Fir'aun and Musa. This conflict between good and between evil, between humility and between arrogance, between the divine revelation and between one's own independent thought, free of revelation. The difference between those who exalt themselves and those who exalt their Lord. The difference between those who serve others and those who have others serve them. This is the fundamental problem on this planet. And the people of the prophetic tradition, the Mosaic people, the Jesuit people, the Muhammadan people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and prayers and peace be upon all of the prophets, these are the people of service. And that's why, if, even if you look at the religious iterations that exist today, the people that take their religion seriously are people of service. Whether they're Christians or Jews or Muslims, you will see that this is a fundamental hallmark of profoundly religious people, is that they serve others, they don't serve themselves. And the reason they're serving others is because they're serving their Lord. But the reminder through the service of others, but the reminder in the Qur'an is al-aqibatu taqwa that the end affair, wal-aqibatu taqwa the end affair is for taqwa. And so inshallah in the next uh, session I'm going to talk about taqwa and its meaning. So I hope you uh, join us again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.